Hershey Park is one of the country's premier amusement parks, especially when it comes to roller coasters. They, by far, have one of the best roller coaster collections in America, quite possibly the world. It's located in Hershey, Pennsylvania, right next to Hershey's Chocolate World. It's a big tourist destination, and there really is something for everyone here. When you enter Hershey Park, not only are you getting an amusement park, but you're also getting an included water park, as well as Zoo America, which is this really cool zoo located right next door. Everyone in Hershey Park can enter that free of charge. On top of that, with the total of 14 roller coasters. The rides range from those who are just getting started their first roller coaster all the way up to the most daring of thrill seekers. And in general, there's quite a lot to discuss with Hershey Park. So let's get into this. Let's first start with the entry experience. Hershey Park is one of the big attractions in this complex that kind of makes up Hershey, Pennsylvania. You have the stadium right next door, Hershey's Chocolate World, which I mentioned earlier. And what's great about it is that all of them share the same parking lot. So you're within walking distance of any of these places. It makes it really easy for when you're on site, you don't have to go very far. Now, this is not a Chocolate World review, but I will mention Chocolate World just a a little bit, mainly because they have a fantastic dark ride in there. Hershey Park is not really known for their dark rides. The only dark ride they had was the Reese's Extreme Cup Challenge. They recently took that out, replaced it with a more up-to-date shooting family dark ride. But even then, it's mostly screen-based, you know, definitely meant for the little ones. The Hershey's Chocolate Tour ride is absolutely amazing. This is practical effects. It is free for anyone. If you walk in the building, you can ride it. It shows you exactly how chocolate is made, it has a catchy theme song with these singing cows and you get a free piece of chocolate at the end. I mean, come on. So even if you're not doing some of the other paid experiences within Chocolate World, this is absolutely something you should check out when you're visiting Hershey Park. And again, because it's next door, all you do is just take a short walk up to the entrance. Now, right outside Chocolate World is Chocolate Town. This is the newest expansion to Hershey Park, and I have an entire video dedicated to everything you need to know about this land, so I'm not gonna go super in-depth, but in short, Chocolate Town opened up in 2020. It's the largest expansion to the park ever. Include Candemonium, which is this big old B&M hyper coaster. It's the new signature front gate coaster. The entire entrance was brought forward and widened. The old entrance was cute and I liked it. I think it had a lot of charm to it. But as Hershey Park has grown in size, it just wasn't very practical anymore. And that's what's great about Chocolate Town because even though it's not really a ride centric area, it's more about the entry experience and it really gets you in the mood, ready to go for the day. And it also improved the physical admission process. Your bag check is now touchless, which just expedites the process. So Chocolate Town is a big win for me. Everything about it feels grand. Unfortunately, that does not necessarily carry over into the rest of the park. And this is really where I kind of get into to my big complaint with Hershey Park. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Hershey Park. But if there is a downside, I think it really lies within the park layout. The layout in general does not feel like it was planned out from the beginning. And I know Disney is like the gold standard, so everyone refers to Disney and it's kind of cliche. But like when you visit a Disney park, the layouts just make sense. It is very easy going from one area to another. Every pathway connects, they're nice and wide. With Hershey Park, you have some pathways that are a little confusing. It's kind of easy to get turned around here. There are many pathways that are just kind of tucked away, which in a way is kind of cool because it almost adds a little bit of a discovery experience where it puts you in the position where you can just wander around and see what you find. So there's certainly an advantage to that. But if you're trying to get from point A to point B, sometimes it's not entirely clear how you should get there. And I understand that they were at a little bit of a disadvantage, or, or maybe it is an advantage depending on how you look at it. This park is a terrain park. There are many hills that you'll be going up and down. One of the big complaints when people are talking about the layout is how the water park is located almost in the center of the park, and it just doesn't really make a lot of sense, especially when you have some rides that are way in the back, like Lightning Racer, where you kind of got to walk through the water park if you want to get there the quickest way. Lightning Racer, the Ferris wheel, Laugh Track, the way the heck out there in the back. You're walking around the water park to get there. I'm not entirely sure what they were thinking when they did that, other than, well, we have access to this space and we want to put in a ride, so let's just go for it, I guess. So at the end of the day, that's my main complaint. I can assure you though, pretty much everything else I have to say is positive. I'll briefly go over the roller coasters. I know I already mentioned how much I love their collection, but seriously, I think Hershey Park has one of the greatest ride collections in the world because 
you ask any coaster enthusiast, what are your favorite rides here? You know, give me a top five ranking. I feel like everyone's gonna have a different order here because they have so many rides that are just really good. People are gonna place them differently, and especially now that you have Canemonium. I mean, it's almost like they have a top six. And especially if you're an Intamin fan, they got three great ones here. I know a lot of people have debated what do they do next now that they have such a fantastic collection. I mean, I've been saying that they need to do something about Wildcat, either RMC it or put some GCI Titan track on it. Or I know some people have suggested a flying coaster would be awesome here, and I agree. But at the moment, they really don't need another roller coaster. The park does not feel like it is obviously lacking in any particular department. And that goes for things besides the roller coasters. I mean, they got a pretty decent number of flat rides here. Maybe something like a Scream and Swing would be great here. A couple years ago, they just added some drop towers with the Hershey Triple Tower. That's really nice. They have a ride here called the Claw, which is unique. It's a little underwhelming, but still very cool looking. And they have quite a few kids rides. And something I also thought was interesting, and this kind of goes back to the layout, they don't really have a designated kids area. The kids' rides, for the most part, are spread throughout the park. That's not necessarily a good or a bad thing. You go to a Cedar Fair Park, they have Planet Snoopy. You go to a Six Flags Park, they have, you know, Bugs Bunny area or whatever. But I wouldn't say there's really a designated section for them here. They're almost in little clumps spread throughout. Something else I'll talk about the roller coasters before moving on, and that's really with their operations here. And I have a dispatch video on this channel that I encourage you to go check out. I've seen some super fast operations here, but other times occasionally you do get some slower ones. And this really conveys in that operations video I did. Skyrush in particular is one of those rides where the dispatches tend to be on the longer side. Most of the time it feels like it's because of the restraints. They tend to not be as accommodating for larger guests. And so it feels like people are constantly getting turned away from that ride and so loading and unloading automatically takes longer and it certainly doesn't help that you board and get off on the same side of the station so i'd say be aware of that and especially be aware if you're waiting for the front row there they have a designated line for the front row and it's always super long but one of the things i do like that hershey does on a couple of rides they have lockers i'd say most of them they have bins but when they do have lockers they are free well they're not free they're just included with the price of admission which I've been saying for years is the way to do things. When you arrive at an amusement park, you aren't thinking about how much you paid to get in. Essentially, if you owe a bag, that ride is now an upcharge attraction. So let's move on. I'll talk briefly about the food. One thing that I think is kind of cool about Hershey Park is that they actually have quite a few name brand locations here, including Subway, Chick-fil-A, Chickies and Pete's, and Moe's. Only park that I can think of that has a Moe's in it. So you can probably guess where I eat the most when I go here. They do also have several unique locations. There's a whole food court back by Hershey Triple Towers. That's great, lots of variety there. And when your park name is Hershey Park, certainly the desserts are going to be a big factor here. And they do have some pretty crazy concoctions here. I think the most signature item is their king-size milkshakes. These are wild. They're super good. If you're visiting with your family, I'd say just buy one. They are kind of expensive. I think they're like $15, but they're so filling. I mean, seriously, they're so big. It probably isn't a good idea to have one just by yourself, but I do recommend trying them out at some point. I don't know of too many places that have something like that. And speaking of good taste, well, th this isn't a taste. It's more of a smell. But what, when you walk in the bathrooms, it smells like vanilla. They're probably the only bathrooms in the world that instead of holding your breath when you walk in because they smell so bad, you actually just start taking big whiffs because they smell incredible and they're really clean. So I never mind using the bathroom at Hershey Park. A few other small points that I'll mention, just some things that I enjoy here. They have a really nice observation tower here called the Kissing Tower. Gives an awesome view of the surrounding area. There's a monorail that takes you into downtown Hershey and back. That's a neat little experience. Coal Cracker is also a pretty cool log flume. It has two side-by-side -side drops. You don't like race anyone when you're going down. It's just to kind of help with capacity. But really, I think that about does it for the rides. And you know, throughout all of this, even though it's called Hershey Park, it's kind of odd there aren't more candy themed rides. And really, I'd say in general, most of the rides aren't really themed. Or if there are, there's minimal theming. This is totally an amusement park. It's not a theme park. They have different named areas of the park, but you won't really find any theming to go along with it. Probably the most themed roller coaster here is Laugh Track, which actually is pretty cool. It's this neat little funhouse spinning coaster. Really cool take on a standard model. That's also one of the few rides that is open during their Christmas event, which is nice. I had the opportunity to go to Hershey Christmas Candy Lane for the first time this past Christmas. Got to see all the lights, 
take a ride on some of the roller coasters that were open, like Cannemonium, Wildcat, etc. I thought it was a nice event, but for me personally, it was a little underwhelming, and it might just be because so many amusement parks I feel like are stepping up their game when it comes to seasonal events. And Hershey Park was doing a Christmas event before a lot of these parks really started catching on to this whole concept. And I don't know, maybe I'm just biased and I love Winterfest so much, but even an event like Holiday in the Park, I personally have preferred over something like Hershey Christmas Candy Lane. That's not to say don't go. It's still a good time. They also have Hershey Park in the dark. That's their October event. It's not really geared towards haunted houses like a lot of these amusement parks. It's kind of more just general festivities. But because I haven't been to that event, I won't really speak for how it is. But in general, this is always an amusement park that I look forward to visiting. I do think it is one of the best amusement parks out there. It actually made the list for one of my favorite parks I've ever been to. I've been going to Hershey Park since Skyrush opened, which is almost a decade ago, which is crazy to think about that. I've been going to this park for almost 10 years. If you've never been before, I obviously highly recommend it. If you're visiting from outside the country, trying to hit some of the best amusement parks in America, I think this is absolutely one that you should hit, especially if you're doing an amusement park tour. It's in pretty close proximity to places like Dorney Park, Knoebel, Six Flags Great Adventure, etc. So it's absolutely a place I recommend. I really do feel like there's something here for everyone. It's also one of those places that I think is very easy to spend more than one day at. It's a very repeatable park to go to. I always look forward to seeing what new additions they come up with and seeing as they just had their biggest expansion of all time, I don't see Hershey Park's momentum slowing down anytime soon. So I wanna hear from you guys. If you've been to Hershey Park, what do you think of this place? Do you agree with the different points I've brought up? Do you think there was something I missed? Post it all down in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, I'd love if you could subscribe. We do roller coaster and amusement park reviews from places all across the world. So thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you next time.